I still got all my fingers. What's up, modern steaders? We just got the phone call and the Cornish crosses are in, so we gotta go pick them. We just have this homemade brooder right here that we use. I'll link the video to it here. I keep it set up by the wood stove. We don't use the wood stove that much this time of the year, but when we do, a little bit of the extra heat from that will help the chicks. I line the bottom with extra cardboard. And then we just put a light coating of wood shavings in for them for now. We don't want to put too many in there. So it just makes more of a mess. We got the homemade water right here that we made. I'll link that video here. This little chicken water works awesome. You don't gotta worry about it getting all plugged up with wood shavings. So we'll put the video right here for you so you can learn how to make it. Let's go get the chicks. We got our box. Just like to dip their mouths in the water that they know what their drink is. See, look, that guy's already wanting a drink on his own. These are Cornish crosses from our local feed store. They said they had gotten 1,500 in today. And I asked them what was the most that one person got, and they said one person ordered 225 of them. They were a dollar 90 a piece. The best thing about getting them through the local feed store is it's the same price as what you get offline, but you don't have to pay for the shipping. And the shipping is usually 15 to 20 bucks for 25 chicks. As you can see, the chicks are very healthy and energetic. We just got them back, and they're already eating and drinking. So now we'll, we, now we'll begin the comparison between raising some Cornish cross and raising some Bodrock roosters for meat. And we'll do a comparison on feed, how long they take to grow out, and the taste of the birds. What's up, modern setters? The sun's out right now, and it's pretty bright. The broody hen, I'll show you in a minute, got moved, so I'm going to... Mark all the eggs she was on yesterday and put her in a different nest box. Got some welding gloves. Let's see if we can move her and maybe the other chicks won't make her move from nest box to next box and we can get these eggs to hatch. So here's a pile of eggs she was on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think eleven eggs is more than enough for this little broody hen to sit on. Got one duck egg. 
I don't know if she'll be able to hatch that out because that takes an extra week than regular eggs, but. Okay guys, wish me luck. Let's see what happens this time. We're just gonna move you, honey. Let's see what she does. I still got all my fingers. She was more noisy than anything, so. Hopefully we can get her to stay up in that nest box and hatch out those chicks for us. If you have ever had any experience with hatching out chicks with a broody hen, leave it in the comments below and let me know how you got the hen to stay in that one particular nest box. And if you moved her, did you have any luck with her staying in that spot or not? This is the first time for us attempting it with a broody hen. I'd love to hear what has worked for you in the past. If you guys liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Love to hear your comments down below on which breed you think is going to make a better meat bird, the Cornish Crosses or the Bard Rocks and why. I'm thinking that the Bard Rocks are going to have a better flavor and they're going to make a better bone broth. But that's just me. We'll be finding out soon enough. So. Share the video, it really helps. And until next time guys, keep on changing the status quo. She's keeping an eye on us right now. Hopefully she'll stay.